Hey guys, welcome again to Cuisine with Polly. Today I'm going to be sharing with you oxtail. Many of you have been asking for this and so today is the day I'm going to run through the ingredients real quickly. Then I'm going to be seasoning, then I'm going to be showing you the cooking part, okay? I, there are some people who are waiting for this. Hi Sophia, hope you're watching right now. Okay, so here we go. Without any further ado, so starting with the oxtail, I just picked up a pack of oxtail at um, Publix or any store. You can get a farmer's market or, you know, once you go in and you ask them for oxtail, they should know what you're talking about. So I just picked up a pack. This is probably about two pounds. And so I'm just going to be going through the ingredients I'm going to be using and putting it in uh, while I'm doing that. Okay. So here we have some browning real quickly, grace browning. Then we have some A1 steak sauce, um, all things uh, beef really. Uh, then we have some pica pepper. These are good for different types of meat. Then we have some Worcester sauce. Then we have here Mrs. Dash steak sauce and some regular, um, regular Mrs. Dash salt free. And I do that because some people are salt sensitive, some ground black pepper, some salt, and we're going to need some oil. I'm using, um, olive oil right now, but you can use any oil of your choice and some garlic. Now, you probably would only need maybe about three cloves of garlic. In here, I have some ginger, some garlic, escalion, and onion, all beaten together, okay? It's nice when you beat it up because you do get the flavors out as you put it in your meat. It will marry, marinate nicely in your meat. And here we have some thyme. I love to cook with thyme. Hardly ever cook meat kind without thyme at all because you get nice flavor from the thyme. Now, over here also, now this is for the first part of the cooking, basically the seasoning. Over here, I'm going to be using, once the meat is, is basically cooked, I'm going to be putting a little bit of ketchup, um, a little a dash of sugar, some butter beans. And here it is, I've opened it, and here, it, this is what it looks like. Drained, nicely drained, you don't need the liquid. And here, some carrot, and for garnish, I have here some fresh parsley, some peppers and chopped onion. And over here, this is the parsley if you prefer to use this one. And in here is just some flour. It's just a little dough. Basically, I just put some flour in the dish, put a little salt in it, and I make it, put water on it and make it into a dough. I'm gonna be using this for what we call in the islands spinners, which is some little long dumplings. Without further ado then, I am going to be getting back over here and I'm going to be throwing all the seasoning in so you can see exactly what happens with that. So here is my beaten seasoning that I talked about before. Here is my thyme, throwing them all in. Now the garlic is already in the bag beaten, so I'm just going to put this aside for now. I'm going to just throw a little bit of uh, which is the sauce on this. And I did wash the oxtail with some vinegar, hence the reason this is sitting here, okay? Some browning. And be careful how much browning you use because it can actually get bitter if you use too much browning. So you want to be careful about how much. And this is probably about mm, a tablespoon and a half or so. And uh, some A1 sauce. Now the A1 sauce and the pick a pepper, you can really wait until when the meat is tender, the cooked and you're putting everything else in. But I like to just throw everything in it all at once. The reason I don't put the, um, the peas and the other stuff in it is because I don't want the, the beans rather beans this is what it looks like I don't want it to be overcooked okay now I'm gonna put my dry seasoning in now herbs 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 nice fresh herbs don't forget your herbs because herbs make your food taste that much better okay you don't have to use both the both types of Mrs. Dash I just do that because I want to at this point but you don't have to do that. You can just put the uh, the steak sauce, some black pepper here, and a dash. And when I say a dash, a dash of salt. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because you don't want for your meat to be salty. When you can add salt, you can't take it out. So be careful how much salt you're putting on. Now, I'm just going to give this a good rub so that all the seasoning can get into the meat. Now, ideally, what you want to do if you're going to be cooking oxtail, this, this is what I would highly recommend for you, is that you season this from the night before and put it in your refrigerator. This way, you allow the meat to, um, 
to marinate. So the seasoning, the nice flavor from all the seasonings just get infused into the meat and it gives you a perhaps better tasting meat. Now I'm gonna be cooking this right now just because I wanna walk, walk through the entire process so you can see exactly what I do. I'm gonna turn my kettle on because I do like to use warm water as I'm adding water because you will need to do that. So this is what it looks like with everything rubbed together at this point. As you can see here, everything nice and brown. So I'm gonna go over here, change this glove real quick. Okay, so now I'm gonna put a little oil in the pot and you wanna use a pot that is not too thin because if it's too thin, it might burn your meat too quickly. So you wanna be very careful of that. So once I put the oil in, I just wait for it to heat up just a little bit and then I'm gonna be adding my oxtail to that. You wanna make sure it gets to a nice sizzle. Okay, so here we go. So once it starts doing that, I'm gonna attempt to pour everything in the pot right now. Now be careful when you're doing that. You can put a glove on and pour it in instead of just doing what I just did. That's safety, easy, okay? So this part of it, this process is called browning. You're browning the meat at this point. So what your what your ID is doing, and the meat is being kept as you're browning. So you're just gonna keep turning. You wanna cover it a little bit, and you're gonna keep turning the meat and adding water. I prefer to use hot water, so I'm gonna be using some hot water to add to the meat. And you don't wanna put too much hot water on it all at once. You wanna just put it, you know, gradually. You keep turning, it keeps browning, and then you keep doing that to the meat until it's tender, okay? So I'm just waiting for my water now to heat up, and I'm gonna just uncover it, and I'm gonna turn just so that you can see exactly what I did. You just wanna keep turning, and I don't like to pressure cook my meat, I like to slow cook my meat, because I personally think when you slow cook the meat, it tastes better than when you pressure cook. Um, so it's totally up to you if you want to do that. For me, I'm gonna I'm gonna slow cook it. So this is what I'm gonna be doing. This takes about depend depends on how um, soft the oxtail is. It can take you up to about two hours to cook. We're not gonna be holding you for two hours right now. I have already cooked some, so but I just wanted to bring it to this point so you can see what I do next. Okay. So I'm just now gonna. Put some hot water, and since I just seasoned it in the dish, just pour some water in the dish. And then I'm gonna pour it in the pot, just to get the rest of the seasoning out. Okay, so let's go back over here. I just wanna let you see. See how nice this looks in here? You just keep doing that. Just keep turning and turning. You really don't need to put any more oil in it, even if it's drying out a little. All you need to do is just keep adding water. Because the, the, the oxtail is already fat, okay? It has some fat on it, so you really don't need to do that. And you also want to watch the, um, the temperature. Now this is, is perhaps perfect. You don't want to keep it too high, but you just want to make it nicely, nicely cook. So here I'm adding some hot water. And if you notice, because I, I added hot water to it, the pot continues to bubble. It's not cold water. I believe that the cold water might slow it down a little bit. So this is what you're gonna do, and you're gonna keep doing that until the meat is tender. Okay guys, let's check on our oxtail. Please recall, after putting in the oxtail with the seasoning and everything that I seasoned with, I just pour in the pot. Now this is what I was talking about. You're just gonna keep adding some hot water to it. When the water dries down, it's continuing to cook. You're just gonna keep adding water until it's tender. Now, this can take a little while. So, you just add a little hot water. There you go. And if you notice, it continues to bubble. If you put cold water, it would probably cool it down and like stop cooking and then start again. That's one of the reasons I don't like to use cold water. And some people actually say that cold water can take some of the flavors out of your meat out of your food if you add cold water instead of warm. So this is what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna continue adding water, adding water, turning, adding water, just so it doesn't like burn in the pot, you know? Adding water until the meat is tender. When it's tender, that's when you will add your beans and 
you know, peppers and other little stuff to it. Okay, that's what I personally like to do. Okay, now this is almost cooked. As I had mentioned before, the oxtail takes a little longer to cook, about two hours. So, you can see everything coming nicely now. This is almost like gravy in here. And I just kept turning and turning and turning, adding a little water, and I'm gonna add a little bit more here. Just like that, hot water, boiled water. And as you can see here, this is perfect. See, it's still bubbling, still bubbling, because it's not cold water. Okay, and you just continue this same process, same process until it's nice and soft enough for you. You determine how soft you want this to be. But I like when it melts off the bone. Okay, and that is why I just continue pouring water until it gets to that point. And then I add my butter beans and my spinners. Well, at this point, you actually could add your spinners, the little dumpling things I showed you before. Um, you could add your spinners. We mentioned that in the ingredients. At this point, while this is still cooking, because the flour does need to get cooked. Okay, and that will be it until you add your butter beans and all the other stuff. Okay, wonderful. Now, as I mentioned before, I already cooked some oxtail. So now we're gonna go into the next half of it. So I'm gonna slip this pot to the side over here and let it continue to cook while I continue to keep an eye on it. And then I'm gonna move this up. Now this is what I mentioned before, the oxtail that is already cooked, okay? So at this point, I'm gonna be now adding my other ingredients so that you can see exactly what I do. Now this is nice and tender, okay? As you can see, you have enough liquid in here because at this point, I'm going to be adding my carrot. And if you notice, I'm not putting too much carrot in there because it's oxtail. We're not making like a, you know, carrot stew or something. So you don't want to, unless you, if you want it, you can, you, it's, you're just totally at liberty to put the amount of um, carrot you want to put. Okay, so this is what I mentioned before. This is my dough, just some flour. I actually put a little bit of cornmeal in mine, but you don't have to do that. You can just use the flour, put a little salt, and you can put some water until it gets to this consistency, okay? You don't want it to be too soft, however. So, I mentioned before that we call them spinners, and the reason we call that, we call it spinners because we just do that. We just roll it and drop it in. Roll it and drop it in. And I'm going to turn this down a little because I don't want the water to dry out too quickly. Roll and drop. Okay. I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like. I've, I've put all the little spinners in. And I'm just going to let it cook for a little bit because I want to make sure that those get cooked. Okay. And I covered it part. So keep it down, not too high. Now we just need about uh, about a tablespoon of sugar, not more. Okay, get that all ready over here, and then I'm gonna be putting just a few ingredients in. Ketchup. The gravy. Sometimes if you're adding a little bit more water, you need to try to taste it to make sure that it's, it tastes good. Because if you need more salt or other sauces, you can add them in at this point. So I'm just going to add a little bit more of this pickle pepper. Now this is the crushed pepper I mentioned before. I am just going to put a dash in it. You don't want to put too much of this. This is totally optional for people who don't like heat. So just a dash. Look how nice that looks. Come 
dentist guys can see this so this is all our spinners here and let me just point out no you do not need to put any baking powder in it because you're boiling it you're cooking it you're not frying or baking so you don't need baking powder so now I'm going to add the rest of the ingredients so remember I talked about my little tablespoon of sugar here we go and this is fresh parsley and this is some cut peppers and onions. Pour it all in. I'm gonna leave the parsley until the end. So that is what it, that's what it looks like. Oops. A little bit more black pepper. And I did mention I'm going to put just a little bit of butter in it. Let's just scrape this out. Put it all in. And this is optional. No, you don't have to put this. This is optional. Instead of butter, you could put some spread because some people are very sensitive to, to putting too much butter. Or some people said, I don't like butter because it's going to make you, you know, healthy for you. And I'm going to give it a taste. Look how pretty that looks. And it smells absolutely delicious. Okay. Now, ideally, just to see if it needs anything more. This is absolutely perfect as is. Okay. So now, I am going to put a little bit of that's so nicely that they should look and then we are done now this can be served with any carbohydrate of your liking could be rice and peas could be white rice just about anything you want okay this is our oxtail with beans now normally when I'm cooking rice, and I'm going to do that in another video, I would normally soak my, if it's a dry piece, I would normally soak it and serve it with that. But for now, this is it, your oxtail. Okay guys, so here is the finished oxtail. Doesn't it look pretty? I hope you will try it. And if you have questions, please, and comments, please leave them below. And please remember to hit the subscribe button 